O oh God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, and welcome to all of our parishioners, our friends, our visitors. Today we celebrate the Mass for Thursday of the fourth week of Easter. We begin our celebration as we always do by standing humbly before God's holy presence and before his holy altar, asking him to forgive us our sins and give us the grace to love as he does. Forgive us all our sins and bring each of us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than it at that at its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness and those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth. May you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Paphos, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent word to them. My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow children of Israel, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of his people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm he led them out, and for about forty years he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. At the end, of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, king of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king, and of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, what is coming after me? 
I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Good to God. The responsorial song. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. That my hand may be always with him and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever receives the one I send, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning again and welcome to all of our parishioners, our friends, our visitors. Today we hear in our readings, a theme that kind of brings everything together as far as what the mission of Jesus is. The mission obviously is to proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah, the risen Lord. But it has a twofold part, twofold parts, as far as it's to preach the gospel. And we hear Paul do that this morning in our reading from Acts, he's invited to the synagogue to preach. And what does he do? He just reminds everyone that Jesus has this connection to all the prophets and all the kings that came before him. And, then, and he kind of sows that thread um, so people, the Jewish listeners, can understand, yes, that this Jesus did come through the house of David, and that he is the real thing. And so Paul is spending his life preaching the gospel, preaching the good news, and that's wonderful. And yet, at the very same time, in our opening line of the Gospel, we are brought back to the Last Supper. And the first image that we're invited to picture is Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. And he's saying, Amen, Amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master. No nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. 
if you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. So what Jesus is doing is making a distinction. There's two components to being a disciple. Proclaiming the word, boldly witnessing to the word as Paul does. At the very same time, taking very seriously the example Jesus set at the Last Supper, to serve. Our life is a life of service. We are called to serve our sisters and brothers. In simple layman's terms, basically Jesus is telling us the theme of today's readings is practice what you preach. It is so easy for us to preach the gospel, especially during this Easter season. It's so easy to say, Alleluia, praise God. And we're just enthralled the fact that we follow the Lord and Savior who is risen from the dead. You know, it's easy to be an Alleluia people. But it's not just about speaking. We're also called to act. And to act in imitation of Jesus. Humbly. As a servant. Lovingly. Patiently. And that's the challenge for us. It's easy to say, this is the gospel. This is what you have to believe. This is what I want to teach you. As another thing to bend down and serve another. To be at the bedside of someone who's sick. To go run errands for one of our elderly neighbors. To look at the phone, see the ID call, and still pick up the phone and talk to that lonely person who's gonna to talk to you for half an hour. To have time for others. And to see all the menial tasks we do as having purpose and dignity because it's not what we're doing, it's who we're doing it for. We're doing it for one of God's children. And as Matthew 25 tells us, whatever you do for the least of mine, you're doing it for me. So we have to see the dignity of the person we're called to serve. Whether it be a street person in the corner of Manhattan, or some poor thing on a subway, curled up in a subway seat in, in the subway system in a big city somewhere. Wherever we find someone called to serve, we realize their dignity, their worth, especially when society or culture has, has basically put them to the side. Much like Mother Teresa, what an inspiration she is. She can see the the sacredness of every human life. And that's what we're called to be like. So today, as we continue our Easter journey, let's ask God for that grace to have the courage of all to preach the gospel, proclaim the gospel with good, with the good news, with enthusiasm and conviction, and at the very same time, to practice, to practice the the works of charity, the spiritual and corporate works of charity. Not just talk about love, but be loved. As disciples of Jesus, let us place our, place our prayers before our Heavenly Father, trusting in His goodness and His love. For the Church, may the joy of the Gospel inspire us as missionary disciples, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders of nations and peoples, and for the resolution of conflicts among them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in coerced or first forced service to another, may the Lord rescue them and instill in them an assurance of their human dignity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may Christ enable us 
to know him more and more. And may this knowledge inspire us in our service to one another. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in faith, may they be rewarded for their service. In God's name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of Joseph Murray and Christopher Badalato, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of this day of life. We thank you for the gospel, the living word, that we just have listened to. May it inspire us to proclaim that Jesus is Lord, but also to do as Jesus did, to serve our brothers and sisters at least among us. We ask this as we ask all things. In the name of your Son, our brother and Savior, Jesus of the risen Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. You become the body of Christ, our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. friends in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Together let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as 
this day acclaim. Holy. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your sons, Joseph and Mary, and Christopher Badabada, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Job and Christopher, who were united with your son in death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed earth. 
Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lady of the Mount, with blessed Joseph and her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, Saints Francis and Claire, each of our patron saints and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him, and with him, and to him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and upon my divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Father. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer to each other the sign of the Lord's peace. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Man of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to be the center of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always. Even until the end of the age. Alleluia. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who 
restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you, God. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you tomorrow.